looming by Mageddon. After a full slate of matches in week four, we head into a week five where there are four major league rugby teams on by, making it a roster nightmare for fantasy MLR managers across all leagues. On this week's episode of the Fantasy Rucker Show, on top of looking back at the exciting week four that was of the 2024 MLR season, we also help league managers navigate through the first by Mageddon of the year with our waiver wire watch segment and of course a look ahead to what's to come in week five the fantasy rucker show starts right now where rugby and the world of fantasy sports collide welcome to the fantasy rucker show bringing fantasy rugby to the masses talking all things rugby from the mlr to leagues around the world we're on top of it Headphones on, pads off. This is the Fantasy Wrecker Show. Now, here are your hosts, Ryan Yee, Matt Yee, and Devin Vanderpool. What's up, everybody? This is episode number 101 of the Fantasy Rucker Show. Thank you so much to our Fantasy Ruckers League members, our community members, and everyone else tagging along of making Fantasy MLR a reality. And uh, with me, as always, every single week, Devin Vandy Vanderpool, who's not here this week, though. Matty Yee, he's taking a little bit of an excursion out to uh, the Pacific Northwest. Um, a well-needed break because it was a tough week for us here on the Fantasy Rucker Show. Oh, uh, was it, it ever. to uh, Fantasy MLR. But we're going we're gonna to break it all down in this episode. But uh, like I said in the teaser at the top of the show, Bye Mageddon is looming this week in this upcoming week five. Uh, four teams on bye uh, after a jam-packed week four that was pretty exciting. Had uh, what I think is the best match of the year so far played on the Friday night between the Seattle Seawolves and the Houston Sabercats. But we got another week. We got to trudge on. And it is by Mageddon. Our very first by Mageddon of the year. So we're going to get you all set up in this episode. Of course, break down the week that was in week four and then look ahead to week five and how we can navigate with all these teams on break and of course we'll have a waiver wire segment to help you guys out when it comes to getting through by me getting here but hey yeah you you happy that maddie's not here i mean it's been a while vandy since it's been a show just you and i uh yeah, buddy. Maddie, like i said uh took a trip out to the uh the pacific northwest to see some people in uh good old van city um van so it's city. just uh you you and me holding down the fort in this one does it feel good does it feel liberating that you're yeah, here without Maddie because he's had a lot of opportunity. I mean, throughout the off season, right? We know you had work stuff going on. Uh, Maddie had the opportunity here to get some uh, some one on one time here with me on the Fantasy Rucker Show. But now here it's your turn to, to make it up here. You know what I mean? And and now uh, now you're you're here and you got you got your chance to now uh, speak a whole bunch of crap here uh, in in, uh, in lieu of Maddie being gone because I know he was uh, crap talking you a whole bunch when you didn't have a chance to speak back. Uh, you know what? I don't say anything. I can't say it to somebody's face. That's not true. But, you know what? <laughs> Matt, I'll save it for next week, boy. We all oh, suck this week. You know what? If I, I would have won, if I would have won, yeah. oh, yeah, I was coming in hot. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's a tough one to talk here. Again, uh, the fantasy ruckers here, you, myself, Maddie. All having tough weeks here in week four, but that doesn't mean it was a tough week for everyone. There was a there was a whole bunch of people that was scoring a whole bunch of points in our fantasy Rutgers leagues. I think this was the first year. Uh, our very own uh, community moderator Stephen Lowen tweeted out that this is, I think, the best showing from the most number of league members uh, across all of our fantasy Rutgers leagues. I believe we had over five uh, people uh, scoring above triple digit points this week after week four, which is which is pretty insane. so uh, pretty pretty cool to see. Well, of course, we're going to break that down in our commissioner Yee's update. And uh, before we kind of move along here, Vandy, I will say I took the opportunity since we haven't had a Matthew List show for quite some time here. And yeah. here on episode number 101, it's, a, it's, it's our first one without him in quite some time. I, I took the honors of putting his name on the Fantasy Rutgers jersey, championship jersey behind me, finally, so that we didn't have to inflate his head when I put it on on, on the show when he was here. So we're going to not allow him to celebrate as hard as he could with his championship win in 2023. Got the name finally on the jersey. Uh, if, you're not, uh, if you're not aware, basically for our Fantasy Rutgers League uh, uh, main OG league that we've had when it comes to making Fantasy MLR reality. We've had a tradition here. Making. Got ourselves making uh fantasy mlr reality uh we have our very own barbarian championship jersey that we got in our first season behind me your name gets etched into the history books when you win the into fantasy the Rutgers stone league. tablet exactly uh john john uh jj Tolts. uh he won our first 
inaugural fantasy MLR season Yeesh. in 2022. Maddie, bouncing back from finishing last in 2022 to finishing first in 2023, finally gets his name etched in the history books here on the championship jersey behind me. I'm sure he's going to say something next week. I'm sure we'll get a text from him once he sees this episode, the fact that we took uh, the honors of, uh, of putting his name on the jersey on an episode that he is not here. But nonetheless, Love it. finally etched in the history books. Um, and uh, to also mention on top of that, uh, we'd like to give back here on the Fantasy Rutgers Show. So a little bit of a nice little bonus here for our Fantasy Rutgers League uh, championship winner is that they get to choose a charity of their choice to donate 100 big bones to big bones. charities that they uh, that they uh, would like to support. So it's a nice little fun thing to do. I know that uh, that some other leagues are trying to put together some championship prizes uh, for for them as well um, as we kind of trudge along here into uh, a week five here after an exciting week four. Uh, but hey, Vandy, you ready for uh, an, an ex- jam-packed episode 100? Obviously, a whole bunch of games to go over, waiver wire, week five preview. You ready to break this down, buddy? Episode what? 101. Yeah, that's not what you said. What I say? One hundred. Well, I guess we're one. We can't relive that hype, okay? That's true. That's true. I mean, it was. I it, it's the glory days, right? The I know glory. it was only about. It was, only, it was only. It was only seven days ago. Yeah. True. But I mean, what a high! What a high, man! Was. Well, hey, if you missed it, you missed our celebration. Had a fun uh, zero to one hundred segment in that episode. So that go, go check that out. Uh, yeah, good it, episode. It was very, Would highly very good recommend. Episode. Uh, so go check that out on our YouTube channel and wherever you get podcasts. But hey, let's hop in to this episode 101 and get this thing rolling. But before we do, like we say every single episode, if you aren't already, make sure you're following us at the Fantasy Ruckers uh, up above on the YouTube video. Uh, you'll find our handles down below in the description if you're listening on the pod. Give us a like, subscribe. We're at 78 subscribers here, so we're inching in oh. on that uh, 100. So wait, let, let, let's get some support here for the Fantasy Rucker Show. It's been absolutely blowing up over this past uh, five weeks of the 2024 season as we've expanded to the the people. Uh, but hey, let's let's keep it on going. Let's get this thing growing even bigger. I love it. I love how uh, we've been saying, trying to make Fantasy MLR reality. And uh, now our our supporters say that we are making it. So let's get even more supporters in the building and get that up to 100. If that's not all enough for you, make sure you join our Discord community. That's been popping off. I've uh, got a nice little game, yeah, game channel. Uh, we People are talking throughout the week. They talk the weekly challenge. Talking talk in the lineup are. section. That's true. That's true. But hey, we figured that out, though. We got those lineup pins now. So that's you, the you, father you, in me. Again. That right there. That's, the, that's like, put your toys where I asked. You know, that's see, the but that's, father in me. That's the thing, though, Vandy, is that way back in the day when you and I were roommates in good old London, Ontario. Oh, yeah. When I was going to Western University. Yeah. Playing in my rugby days, my yeah. days. You were going to Fanshawe College. Yeah, as a Falcon. As a Falcon. You you never follow the rules. And look at you now. You got you got a kid. You got a second one coming on the way. And all of a sudden, you're you're the, the dad quarterback. here. I'm a system quarterback, okay? Is that true? I play the role needed at the time. <laughs> and what? You're you're now what? Maturing here? You're... College was asking me to be a deviant. I, I, I perform. That's true. To a high punching, ability, if I might say so. Punching holes through our walls in the, the house that we lived in quite frequently. A that's lot were in my room. That's a story for another day. But yeah, anyways. Yeah, that's a anyways, story. Uh, yeah, we got a, a Discord community uh, that you can join. A uh, whole bunch of fun people in there. Let's get that to keep on growing. I think we're approaching on 100 people in there as well. And then if that's all, again, not enough for you, check out the fantasyruckers.com. Obviously, our league members have been using that pretty religiously as the season has charged on because our new revamped website, kudos and shout out to Alistair Kirsch, oh, the guru behind it. looks beautiful. Fantastic looks so job, much better. Friend. It's, it's fantastic. So check that out. All the stats, fantasy stats are up there. So even if you enjoy just kind of taking a gander in some in-depth knowledge, if you love the MLR that much, uh, check out the fantasyruckers.com as well there too. All right. Uh, well, hey, uh, let's get right into it, Vandy. Uh, not many news and notes like we've been saying the past few episodes. So we're, we're going to hop it right into, uh, into the Commissioner Yee's update heading into week five. <laughs> All right, here you, here you, here is Commissioner Yi, Supreme Commissioner Yi. I got to get used to that. Ooh. I got to say Supreme Commissioner Yi. Uh, uh, Fantasy Rutgers League update here to break down everything latest going around, around in the world of the Fantasy Rutgers. And we always start off this segment every single week since we've begun it this uh, this year. We got to talk a little bit about this weekly challenge. Dude, about, it's fun. Uh, 
It, it's it's cool. It's a, it's a nice little way to dip your toes in the world of big fantasy week. MLR. You did have a big week. Uh, Vandy finishing us uh, uh, eighth here mm -hmm. out of the uh, over 20 people that we have participating in our weekly challenge. Uh, your seventh overall, not too bad. Uh, had a showing of 53.3 uh, fantasy points. That's pretty, yeah. pretty good. Well, Three Matt cheats, Bitsy cheats. Curse pool runs the website, so I'm not saying nothing. Lots of love to him, and then Ryan cheats. So I mean, no, no, let's not, let's not let cheaters. I'm in fifth. <laughs> let's not throw that slander in there. I love, I, I, I do appreciate that you're leaving out the people, our supporters that have been kind to play this weekly challenge. That's right, and you're just I got nothing but love for you them. Know. Um, but yeah, I mean, you mentioned it, uh, Matt Yee. He might not be here, but he had a killer of a weekly challenge week, uh, getting uh, 73.6 fantasy points with yep. the roster that he used. Uh, is second overall now with 210.8 overall. Big boy I will week. say, though, you know, I might not have finished in the top five this week. Did finish six, so just outside got, uh, yeah, got 58.3. Not too bad. Uh, enough to keep me in the lead here for the weekly challenge. Wait, uh, you... With, uh, two... Oh, you had Echeverry. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I, had I was hammering Echeverry. Yeah, I, had I mean, Pachos had a, Pachos had a double, yep. uh, double try week, which we'll get into. But I took your boy Echeverry... Fido, too. Yeah, and I, we will get into Fido because uh, oh. I am having big regrets about him in my uh, fantasy Rutgers lineup that I had some questioning. But yeah, a, a lineup of McNulty, play? Colin Gross, Echeverry, uh, Mika Kruse, and Aina Futi uh, doing pretty well for me here and keeping me in the first thing. So, hey, if you haven't already, Weekly Challenge is a lot of fun. Like we said at the top, uh, it's a nice little way to dip your toes in uh, the world of fantasy MLR and get a taste of it. If you thought that uh, joining a full season-long league was a little bit too daunting for you to start off with, yay, uh, try out the, the Weekly Challenge, and then you can get yourself all prepared, um, get a little practice in before you join in 2025 for a full-fledged season. Uh, you can find that sign-up link down below below in our description on our socials in our bio as well uh sign up on the fantasy and participate in the weekly challenge uh rules are posted there as well it's been a lot of fun like vandy said um i will say uh we have started to do this every single week and it's a whole bunch of fun we're gonna highlight our top league performers across the uh the fantasy ruckers leagues um and talk about who are our best performers in uh round four uh and our top performer 134 Point six fantasy points. That's incredible. Wow. The scattered Rattlers of the Scrum and Coke League. Absolutely racking it up. Best I mean, league name. A week. It's pretty good. Uh, coming at second, uh, our, one of our newest members in the Fantasy Rutgers League, uh, LaRouge Rugby, uh, 111.9 fantasy points. It's his first year, and he's been tearing Dude, it up. he's taking this league by storm right now. I believe I believe he finished at the uh, the top of the list uh, when it comes to Rugby Mornings, John Fitzpatrick's Fantasy Rutgers League Fantasy MLR rankings. Dude, he drafted um, so well. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of that is on the backs of, of, uh, of his Don't say it. Canadian. No, no, no. No, we're not going to say that name, but there is one special hometown Canadian that I know you're regretting there, friend of the show. Killing me. Andrew. Every week I'm watching these damn games. <laughs> Picking myself, man. But we'll get into it. Uh, 109.5 points by the uh, Fighting Beavers of the Lou Mal Natties League. Uh, good to see there. 107.6 and fourth by Blood, Sweat, and Beers of uh, uh, the Try Hards Leagues. And 106.5 points uh, by Poacher John of the Ruck This League. Again, the most triple digit performances across all our leagues in the history of the fantasy ruckers so far. So great to see a lot of people racking up a whole bunch of points. I didn't have a whole bunch of them. It'd been nice if yeah, some of you may have uh, shared a little bit, but nonetheless, uh, that's fantasy that. for you. Um, you know. But it's always, you know, not doing bad and winning. It's two different things. So we, we got to get that straight. Even but if you lost by point five, they don't matter. A loss, a loss, you know? It don't matter. It don't matter. They all but, hurt. Uh, yeah. Uh, congratulations to uh, those five who had an absolute tear of a week four. Uh, if you're able to score in the uh, top for you, five winners. of the, uh, the Fantasy Rutgers League, uh, you'll be able to have your name here mentioned on the Fantasy Rucker Show. All right, Vandy, busy week four. Uh, you ready to get into uh, get into the uh, matches here? Uh, yes, sir. All right, let's get into it. Well, first one, I knew this was going to be the match of the week heading Dude. into week four. What a way to it start it. Disappoint on the Friday night, our very first Friday night matchup of the year. The Seattle Seawolves taking on the Houston Sabercats at home. And I mean, let me start off by saying this. Right, going into this matchup, I thought it was going to be somewhat of a, a defensive battle, right? Seattle, known yep. for their seawall. Yep. 
Um, everything was uh, trending in the way of it being a kind of a lower scoring game. The weather was pretty crazy. It was yep. cold. It was rainy. Uh, it looked like it was not going to be a fun uh, a fun match to participate in for the players. And you could be but more 82, wrong. You couldn't be more wrong. 82 fantasy points scored in this. And we're going to start mentioning some team of the week honorees because I know that's a, a highly coveted award that we hand out on this show. Uh, yeah, three of them. In this match, in an 82-point scored game, I think, and I don't think this is a hyperbole to say, this was the most exciting and highest quality, I think, MLR match to date that we've had so far this year. Well, there was there were some big scoring games, but this was the one where, you know, uh, not to get off topic, Miami went up 21 and then Anthem chased them, but this was the one where it was just back and forth, just mm -hmm. a grueling physical game. Like, yeah, great to watch. Those are the games when you're just, you love watching it. You know, it feels like you stole something getting to watch that. Yeah. And I mean, to be fair, uh, the favorites going into this matchup was the Seattle Seawolves. Yep. But they got proven wrong. Well, I mean, we, we, did say, Cats, we did say before the show, the only reason we leaned one way to the other was the uh, the home field. That's true. That is true. And I mean, what a big win for the Houston Sabercats. 42-40 over the Seattle Seawolves away from home. Uh, and again, just incredible. And I think we'll start breaking it down through kind of a surprising lineup. I just want to add one tidbit. With. I did say Houston's going to end up in the shield. And I stick by that. I said you it week one. That. It's true. It's true. And hey, hi, Stephen Lowen, again, our community moderator is probably pretty pumped up being our in-house Houston Sabercats fan. Um, and yeah, they're looking electric. And I will say, like I was mentioning, that the lineup kind of looked a little bit interesting ahead of the Friday's mm -hmm. match. Uh, Davey Coatser going to the uh, fullback 15 role yep. and AJ Alatimu starting at 10. And I was kind of hesitant. I had both of them on my roster, not seeing AJ Alatimu uh, in the first two weeks of the lineup had to drop him stuck with Davey Coatser after his big time performance. And then AJ Alatima starts in week three, no signs of Davey Coatser. And then again, they come up with this shocking lineup. Yeah. And the question was who was going to be kicking. A lot of people had their bets on AJ Alatima doing it. And that's what ended up being the case. And I mean, if, you, if you're picking up AJ Alatima, if this is the lineup that, uh, that Houston is going with now moving forward. Um, I mean, AJ Alatima, what a game. I mean, fantasy what wise, it was a little game. bit, a little bit maybe not as reflective of how if, uh, impactful he was on the field. But oh. I mean, man, AJ Alatimu, his kicking was electric. Uh, I mean, he scored 14.7 uh, uh, fantasy points, which is still a solid yep. showing for a fly half position. Uh, 12 tackles and uh, three conversion kicks, three penalty kicks. Yeah, I, I think mean, he was AJ perfect Alatimu. except for one conversion, I think. Yeah. I mean, electric 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 he's the guy that i wanted to start off with because what a good feeling to go back home to the team that you're playing with the past few seasons mm -hmm. and put up let a you game. go and you put up a game against them and you get the two-point victory yep. i mean congrats to aj out to me making a statement against his former club and there's a little bit of, uh, of of me saying hey maybe this lineup was indicative of the houston saver guys knowing what this meant to aj and being like hey let's give aj the start here because we know this is going to mean i don't know they look so good yeah. that this might be the lineup going forward it worries me if i'm a davy coaster owner we'll get into that but i mean aj proved that he he he's he he's, he's back i mean well the weird thing was, was week was two davy coaster was like electric man yeah he was like I, I think i said he was the my fantasy player of the week yeah, the like key had a monster game, and then, like you said, nowhere to be week three, and then you know for no rhyme or reason, you don't want to say lost his job, but you know if you're not, well, if you're not me, kicking for a fly half, I mean, fifteen well, that's, that's, points, but that's the, well, that's the thing, right? And I think that's the the biggest point here is that you're losing out on now. Davy Coates is yeah. kicking, and that's, that's exactly what made him. So, he does have that break line ability yep. at the fly half position that is quite unique but you're not going to get that when he's playing fullback no, and you're then you're not going to get the kicking on top of that you don't get that kind of advantage um and i think again all of that is somewhat concerning i'm still confident in the player of davy coatser yep. i think the big uh, issue here though is again he's moving to that fullback position you drafted him i dropped him in the second round to be my starting fly half and if this is going to be the case i'm sitting there now relying on oscar collar as a guy that i picked up in the waivers because who of is AJ giving you no reason to worry good. Sure, and we'll we'll get into that. But again, I think the biggest concern for me here is Davy Coatser 
And I don't know if there was a, a any knock uh, thing involved here, but getting subbed out at the 56 minute yeah. for uh, for the the rookie in Schumacher, which is not something that I, I would have necessarily uh, Max Schumacher, I would have not necessarily have predicted, you know. And again, I get it, trying to get keeping your two best players in the match into that starting lineup, having yep. Davy Coates right at that 15 position, uh, but he's going to take a knock fantasy. Uh, uh, value wise if that's kind of the lineup moving forward if he's no longer going to be at that 10 position again we'll see kind of how the weeks play on yep. there is the factor that AJ was playing against his former team we'll see if they kind yep. of do this alternating thing but I think now that we're starting to see a pattern here with the Houston Sabercats and kind of how they're approaching the season how good they have been with both of them mm -hmm. at the at the fold you're undefeated after four weeks of play I think they're comfortable going either way and you're just not going to have the Davy Coats are week in and week out. You're going to have to kind of have a backup plan in place, which is yep. not what you were expecting when you drafted him in the first. Which at week four, picks. I mean, I'm one of those guys that I have two fly halves all in one team, and there is no fly halves to go around. I'm sure it's very similar in all leagues. The It's a position that gets scooped up immediately. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, electric, I mean, it was fun to watch. It was back and forth. Like you said, Vandy, uh, let's, let's dish out some, uh, some team of the week honorees here, uh, for the first, uh, for the first week, uh, that Houston and Sabercats matched up here in 2024. Uh, and let's start off with, uh, Joe Tafetti. Because, I mean, man, what yeah. a match by Joe Tafetti. Yep. It started off a little bit slow, but, man, he took advantage of that uh, Seawolves pack. And and he was rolling 16.8 fantasy points uh, from the front row position, which is electric. Pull, played the full 80 minutes, uh, 46 meters gained. Again, two tries off at the back of the set piece from the Seawolves. What I think is huge here, if you were able to hop on, because I think the big, the, big uh, the news here is that it's Peter Malcolm was the guy that was kind of going into the season about, hey, this is the guy that's going to be the starter for the Seattle Seawolves. Joe Tafetti and him are going to kind of split this time. But since the injury of Peter Malcolm, I mean, Joe Tafetti has this role locked down. And it's not often. Mm -hmm. I mean, four straight weeks where he's, uh, he's, he's played over 65 minutes. Three of the four, he's got at least the 70-minute bonus point. This past week, he played the full 82 and got two tries. Uh, it's incredible. Uh, Joe Tafetti, our week four front row team of the week honoree. I mean, what what an electric player and really benefiting from the injury. Again, not wishing injury on any player. But again, mm -hmm. this is kind of a indicative and a reflection of taking advantage of certain situations and, 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 and league managers being aware of these situations. And if you were drafting Joe Tafetti or if you were able to pick him up even, after the injury to Peter Malcolm, uh, I mean, what, what a player you now have for what looks like to be the rest of the year. Because I believe, and I could be corrected uh, possibly, but Peter Malcolm isn't coming back anytime soon. Uh, and Joe Tafetti is going to reap the rewards here moving forward. Yep. I'd also right. say uh, Jade Stiglin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not of a team of the week honoree this week. Yeah, I, I just want to throw him. Just in got outplay there, but he's going to be, and maybe this will be the uh, the uh, uh, our, our book it bets segment. It was mm -hmm. a name that was uh, brought by uh, one of our our league members, Nick, uh, one of our commissioners, uh, where we kind of lay down the line here, and I, I'm going to book it right here. Jade Stigling is going to be the steal of the 2024 fantasy MLR season. When we go over our bus and steals picks when we reflect on the 2024 year yep. jade stigling is going to be that guy because i mean what 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 a performance by jade uh he throws up another 21.3 fantasy points it's his third straight week scoring above 17 oh. he had 70 meters gained two tries six tackles a breakdown steal in this one played full 80 minutes he's the only back three player on the seattle seawolves squad that has played and started every single match so far and you would not have got, guessed that going into this year uh, i mean we heard names of you know Ina foodie right one of our top players in 2023 Damn, started. yeah but he's not back three true not back true, three. true true true, not true. Back three. yeah uh tony pulu we talked about tony pulu yeah. uh and and the big signing there he's been in and out the only common factor has been jade stigling and, and he I is mean, fire electric I, man I missed out on him. Uh, did not put enough fab down on him. Yeah, I am a me too, buddy. Pulu owner. I should have put a lot more on him. Uh, being a part of the Seattle offense is going to be yeah. a crucial part of a championship run. In I thought Dan Creel was enough. Turns out Dan Creel's losing everything to Jade. I mean, but two different positions, though. I mean, again, uh, you know, you, you, you Jade Stigling, back three player. Yeah, he's, he's, he's on the wing. Games. He's And he's doing great he's on the wing, man. He's so fast. Yeah. Great positioning. So, yeah, and then a couple other Team of the Week honorees that we'll break down here. Uh, Tautala Tasi Tasi, 
Uh, Houston Sabre guys. A lot of uh, the his points coming off of that steal mm -hmm. uh, off of Sam uh, Windsor. Yeah. 23 and a half fantasy points there, but he is our team of the week center. Tell tell Tassi. Tassi. Yeah. Uh, I mean, moving from the Toronto Arrows, he's found a very comfortable spot here with the Houston Sabre cast. 73 meters gained, nine tackles, four breakdown steals. Four. Crazy. Uh, uh, with a try on top of that, the full 82 meters gain. He's going to be another one of those guys that we're going to be talking about later. And then our defense set piece team of the week, of course. If Joe Tafetti is scoring two tries off of the back of this pack, they're going to be obviously among the top when it comes yeah. to defensive set piece. They've thrown six fantasy points as well. But uh, yeah. Just an electric game. I mean, mm -hmm. I think this was the game we wanted to stick on the most of. It was, again, the most exciting MLR match to date of this 2024 year, I think. I thought uh, so. Some of the best quality. Uh, so it was really, really good stuff. Anything more for the Seawolves, Houston, Sabercats? I mean, Sabercats 4-0. They might be the favorite right now to win. Yeah. No. I, I was, I'm right there with you, buddy. All right, let's shift on over to the second or the first match of the Saturday, second match of week four, Old Glory DC at home taking on the San Diego Legion. And this one was an interesting match. No team yeah. of the week on a reason this one. Uh, kind of a lower scoring game. Nasty Glory, weather. Nasty weather. The wind was looked like it was going sideways. And that is, I think, a good Those point fans, man, I felt terrible for those well, fans. They Alistair, showed so many and they're just like, we we're going to have to ask Alistair how he was because he goes to every single home game and he uh, was definitely there this past weekend. So oh, we'll see how it is. He was shaking I, in the boots. We're in this kind of uh, in Pennsylvania. I know what it was like on uh, on Saturday. It was a cold one being out there. It looked cold on the TV too. But 27 to 11 victory for the San Diego Legion. San Diego moves to 3 and 1. Old Glory DC falls to 1, 2 and 1. I think before we kind of get into the breakdown of the game, Vandy, I think that's the big thing, weather, right? And I think yep. that's the one thing that maybe I have been overlooking a little bit and something that does have a high emphasis in the football realms where if you're having a start sit kind of question, right? Like, so for me, right. My big question going into this was, do I start Axel Muller or do I start Ed Fido? Axel Muller coming off big of a game. massive 20 point mm -hmm. week. He, he seemed like a beast, right? And how do you bench a guy after he has such a week like this? Ed Fido coming off injury. Will he stay on for the full 80 minutes? Not too sure. Maybe if I uh, if I'd considered weather a little bit more, that would have been the kicker to put Ed Fido in my lineup mm. and reap the rewards of his performance versus Axel Muller's. Not necessarily lackluster; he still scored like seven fantasy points. Yep. But you know, weather obviously having a play in this, and that's just a reminder and a tip to our league members is that everything's a factor here when it comes to fantasy sports. You, the more you can think into it and dive, you can never do enough research, and no. and you factor in weather you factor in lineups you factor in all these things um it can really help you on the and then you still way. make the wrong decision and that's fantasy and, and that's how it works that's how it works but again it was an interesting one old glory i mean there's for them it's you get two teams they're back and forth are yeah, you gonna get man. The team, or are you going to get the team that beat the new england free jacks or are you going to get the team that only scored one try and was left scoreless in the second half against the san diego legion side again i get the weather uh, but the handling error. The ball handling. Crap. That was just going to say, man, so many knock-ons. Just poor, poor ball handling penalties. Yeah. And I will say, to their to to their defense, this San Diego Legion defense, a team that last year was really relying on this electric offense, yep. their defense is really stepping up this year. To yep. only allow 11 points uh, was pr pretty, pretty crazy. Yep. But nonetheless, though, messy game. Messy. San Diego coming out on top. All glory. They got to find their groove and rhythm. Just just consistency here when it comes well, to... San Diego's season. set piece, especially in the second half, was just so good. So yeah. good. Yeah. All right. Well, let's break down some players here. Uh, the best uh, fantasy point performers here. Uh, Tian Lutz uh, from uh, the San Diego Legion, starting in place of uh, Ma'a Nanu on that inside center position. His first start and first appearance of the year. 121 meters gained. 12 tackles. Big boy try. Uh, yeah, it was a big one. Played the full 80 minutes. Uh, Damian Hoyland, he seems to be good ever since his appearance in round three. 136 meters gained. Uh, three tackles, three breakdown steals for 20 fantasy points. Yeah. Uh, and then Jason Robertson. I mean, he did all right. I mean, he's yeah. been kind of back and forth here, but 12.7 for him. 44 meters gained. Two penalty kicks, 11 tackles uh, with 76 minutes played. He made some uh, nice passes, man. And, you yeah. know, decent kicking in the wind. 
And a streamer that I had, Marcel Brocky, uh, he's playing at that fullback position in yeah. this one. Uh, has that center eligibility with uh, with Billy Meeks losing his uh, uh, center eligibility to fly half. I needed to slot someone in there. He did not too bad. Five tackles, 111 meters gain. He was a pretty solid streamer for you. And then last, I mean, I'll mention it, uh, Hugh Roach. Yep. Uh, he's the benefactor of that San Diego set piece that you were talking about. Yep. One try, 16 tackles for him. Uh, 24 meters gain in 77 minutes played. Hugh Roach looking like a pretty solid. And McClutchy, not bad off the boot. Yeah, still no, still no sign of Matt Gitto. Uh McClutchy seems to be taking uh, taking care of business. I think here. he missed uh, two conversions. I think. Yeah, so lined yeah. up two, got two in, got the penalty kick, thirty six meter gain, four tackles, a try assist, two straight weeks with a try assist. Now, uh, second straight week with double digit fantasy points. Yep. Witness third straight start at fly half. McClutchy, uh, for all You're those that, out man. there. They were uh, they were giving us a whole lot of flack about uh, ranking McClutchy in our uh, in our top five for fly halves this season. Uh, not that he's lived up to that standard yet, but he's definitely uh, a lot of people are saying, "What the heck, uh, Matt Gitto? We haven't even seen Matt Gitto yet. I think he's still in Australia, and you can't score like Maddie said fantasy points from Australia no. here in the MLR. No. Um, all right, let's uh, shift on over to the uh, third match of Week Four: uh, the Miami Sharks and Anthem Rugby Carolina. Uh, don't think we need to spend too much time on this one, uh, like we expected. Uh, maybe only, well, I should say this, like I expected, because you and Maddie both predicted uh, the anthem to win their first. What was and I on last week, dude? I get it. I get it. There was some sense of optimism after their performance no, against the Dallas no. Jackals. Don't defend me. What it was is I watched too much damn sports. Okay, and I, you know what? And when you gamble, you start loving underdogs, and you start loving all this crap. Sometimes you just got to be aware that a team is going to be beat down. And if you make a statement like we did, and, I, you know, we said under three wins all year, and then the first chance they get at a win, we're like, yeah, they're going to win. 100% on me. Miami, 21 por- points right out of the gate. At your yeah. very money with the boot. Money yeah. passes. like, And, I mean, what a game. 50 first half points? 50. Uh, I would have to check on that, but the 50 overall, I mean, 50, 50 to 21, uh, not quite the beat down that, uh, maybe Anthem saw last week against the Dallas Jackals when there was a sense of optimism, but this one was just, it was tough. I mean, Miami, again, like you said, Vandy, 21 points in the first 15 minutes. Crazy match. Crazy. Uh, move the Miami Sharks, get their first, uh, win in franchise history. At good home. doing it. They're now one in three. Uh, Anthem fall to 0-4. Um, and again, not going to spend too much time on this one. I think the moral of this story here moving forward is I am not going to pick the Anthem Ever. unless they – Ever again. Until they prove me wrong. Until they and play I mean, Utah. Ooh. Until <laughs> until Ooh. I see – I bet the other I bet the other side and they take get a win out of here. But, yeah, this Anthem team looks like they're going to have uh, – Maddie said it last episode. I think the only team that they had a chance of beating was Miami, and they lost – to Miami 50 to 21. So And you know what? We'll Honestly, see. poor poor game by Anthem. I mean, if you're if you own a lot of Miami players, I wouldn't sit here and feel like those are plays every week either. I mean, if you look no. at the tackling at the line, it was so bad. But I will say I think what this is reflective of, Andy, and I think you'll agree here, when it comes to the weekly challenge Great. or when it comes to how having... anybody gets the Anthem, play exactly. the fly half, the back three, anything you can. Exactly. And I mean, when it comes to if sit and start decisions, oh. if, if, if the one guy's facing the anthem, the other guy's hammer. not, you're, you're hammering home. Well, oh, we got to give you, when you're scoring 50 fantasy points, there, there's got to be some team of the week honorees. So there's two yeah. of them here. Our second row team of the week honoree, Thomas Caceres with 13.6 fantasy points. Yeah. Um, and I will say as a second row player, that's pretty solid. 13.6 dang good. Uh, is not too bad uh, for this one. Uh, again, uh it's 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 good to see uh with thomas caceres uh lining up for uh the uh full 80 minutes in this one uh 14 tackles uh 84 meters gain pretty solid stuff from yep. the uh the second row position uh second team of the week honoree at the back row position is uh ardeo uh manuel ardeo Mm-hmm. 19.2 fantasy points from the back row position. Uh, pretty solid. Uh, he uh, scored two tries in this one. 82 meters gained, five tackles. And again, that's kind of like the – that is the the whole outlying stat line when it comes to players who are playing the anthem, right? You take those two tries away, not necessarily that impressive of a fantasy mm-hmm. performance, right? You got five tackles, 82 meters gained. And you only got 56 minutes. Well. Yeah, 56 minutes. 
which I'm assuming because uh, they're, they're subbing those guys out after being up by so much. Uh, you can only run you by so much. Tries. You can only run freely for so long. Yeah. So, again, uh, Ardeo looking good. But, hey, there are some other performers in here, too. Uh, I think the interesting question whenever a team is facing the Anthem squad is finding the guy that's going to score the tries. And a lot of oftentimes is going to be the back row or back three player. And it's just yeah. picking which back three player is going to do it. This week was Santiago, Santiago Videla, uh, 118 meters gained, 15 tackles, a try assist, a breakdown steal. And he yeah. has a try on top of that for 26.3 fantasy points. Uh, we'll talk about him a little bit more uh, later in the show in our waiver wire segment, uh, but 26.3. And then Matt or, or Vandy, you mentioned it, Felipe Echeverri, money from the boot, uh, five conversion kicks, a penalty kick a try, a try assist, 83 meters gain, 22.1 fantasy points. Uh, Philippe Echeverry was pretty good. Um, and Nick Grigg, good to see Nick Grigg uh, have his first big performance of the year, 20.9 fantasy points uh, for a try, 110 meters gain, a try assist, eight tackles, the full 80 minutes played. Has uh, been uh, a little bit of a disappointment this year so far And his first three starts, not scoring more than 5.4 fantasy points, but he finally breaks through here, and hopefully this is big things to come. If there's a confidence booster, if there's kind of like a, a tune me up game it's that you need to have, it's against the anthem. And Nick Grigg had that. I will add in there, Taranga Tier Y Tokia. Yeah, good game. Uh, y Tokia, uh, uh, solid game. I mean, his second start of the season, right? He's got subbed in uh, in the the second week, uh, but now is finally finally establishing himself here uh, on uh, on anthem. And he had another solid game, another mm -hmm. double digit performance. Uh, y Tokia uh, lining up uh, 82 meters gain, 13 tackles, a breakdown steal, and a try. A uh, pretty nice try, too. A nice little kick yep. uh, from Oscar Collar um, and getting that, uh, getting that in there. So, again, there is value to be had here on this anthem side. But you got to find it. Finding it. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, their hearts to rely on, especially when they come. You don't feel confident. Guys. You know, you feel confident after the game's over, obviously. If you had any of them, but then going into next week, you can't tell me you look at your lineup and go, yep. Yeah. And can't I can't mean, wait to rock Nick Grigg again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, Nick Grigg's on Miami. Oh, true. True. Nick Grigg. But like, like again, like to ring a tier Tokia, right? Like the, the, the performance is largely based on the try. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And when it comes to the anthem, those tries are going to be far few in between. I'm a little bit comfortable comfortable with Oscar Caller. I mean, 14 I would be. fantasy points. He's good from kicking. Right? Great on the boot. tackles, a try assist. So, and when he you tackles, these, man, for a 10. He tackles. He yeah. tackles. Yeah, more than more than Jason Putros, that's for sure. Matthew will oh, definitely oh, say oh. that. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it is those consistent metrics that you'll want yep. to look out for yep. on these anthem guys. Kicking tackling mm -hmm. meters gain guys they're not going to get you these explosive 20 point games mm -hmm. but they're not going to burn you either but there's going to be a lot of guys on this anthem team that's going to burn you quite a bit all right let's uh shift on to uh the uh fourth matchup of the weekend and it was the last one on saturday the dallas jackals taking on the nola gold and for me vandy this was kind of my wake me up game and i say that because i think oh, it was wake me up in two ways uh, I think I am convinced that this Nola Gold team is legit. Might be living up to the standard that Matthew has seen them over the past couple of years. Man, because when they play, it's not perfect, but this is a team that when they are in open space, when they are in free play, just electric, electric. And when they have all the gears going, and Rodney Iona looks solid and and good, a great great performance for him. We'll get into him here. Yeah, your meter uh, leaders are ten. What? Right. I mean, just and then the return of Ed Fido again, regretting not putting in my lineup. What an impact he is to have on, on there as well. Um, that force, uh, Luke Campbell looking solid again. We'll get into that, but Nola Gold, just I mean, dude, it's there, it, it, there, you know, from 10 to 15 are just, I mean, even nine. Luke Campbell's no joke, Rodney yeah. Owen, a feed out, Jordan Jackson, Hope, Jay Pudubasi, Phil Amone. It just, yeah. it, I think it's the most stacked, uh, back in, in the league. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's why Maddie's been so high on them uh, for so long. And now, when you finally see it clicking a little bit, mm -hmm. it looks good. But I go to the flip side, wake me up game Dallas. is because Dallas. I mean, a lot of optimism going into this one. We've said it on this show before that I think this is a different Dallas Jackals team. Mm -hmm. I do think that is still the case. This is a much improved Dallas Jackals side than what we've seen in years past. Now the bar is pretty low for this franchise yeah. so far in the MLR. But this is a hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. All right, there's still kinks to be worked out here, right? Yeah. They're 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 on the right trajectory, but this is the right. Hey, like we gotta we gotta tune up here because I mean, again, 
Nola were was hot out the gates, and they they had yeah. they had a lead thirty five to twenty two win for Nola, pushing them to three and one. Dallas falls to two and two, but that score is a lot closer than what it was for a majority of that game. I, I was mean, just about to say, if you don't have uh, Sam Gala making an incredible Superman play, right, and then that right. try at the end, I mean, without those two, you know, what do you call them? You don't want to call them fluke because I mean Sam Gala made that play, but without those right. two. You know, it's not your conventional. It's no. not your conventional team performance yeah. tries that is indicative of the. If you look at the box score, you're squad. like, "Wow, Dallas!" You know, great yeah. game against Nola. But then when you watch the game, it's like, "Yeah, I mean, sure, okay." Yeah, Nola, Nola pretty dominant in this one, and it's intriguing to see. And and man, uh, it it is it is pretty cool to 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 see Nola kind of finally clicking it together again. Though, I would put Nola. In I don't I think they're a better team than Old Glory DC, but I again think so. I think they have the same sentiment. Yep. Where you don't know what team you're going to get on a week in and week out. No. They're three and one now. They started hot last season as well until they kind of tapered off and fell off. Yep. Let's start seeing some of these games of Nola now stringing them together and looking good. So we'll see whether or not they can they can make a push here. And again Dallas, I think there's optimism here, but again it's kind of like a a check. You know what I mean? Well, like they're on the right path. Let's just let's just. Uh, if let's, Maddie let's... was here, he would say about Nola. He'd say, "Well, rugby's won with your forward pack," and I, I've yet to see that game on a Nola where their forward pack is just sure dominating. You know, they just get these breakthroughs. Their their back line's insane. So I mean, you get those kind of outcomes, but I mean, Nola's scary. Irregardless, yeah. Nola's scary. Uh, and uh, uh, kind of a big contributor, as we mentioned their names already, but let's talk about some of these individuals. And there's a couple team of the week on a reason this one. And we got to start off with Luke Campbell. I mean, 10.8 fantasy points mm -hmm. uh, for the scrum app position is pretty solid. Great. And I think that was the important thing was we saw him attacking and yep. we saw him. These were not just kind of try assist your typical scrum half fantasy type performances. He was involved. And if we can start getting more games, especially when you have an electric back line like this, mm -hmm. uh, from 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 a guy like Luke Campbell, who there has been a whole bunch of optimism with him uh, p over the past years, it's good to see him bounce back. And and he's had a little bit of a down year so far when it comes to 2024, 2.5 in round one, didn't play in round two, in round three, 5.8 fantasy points. But in round four, 10.8 fantasy points, fantasy points, 82 uh, minutes played in the 45 meters gained a try scored six tackles. That's pretty solid. And you're yep. pretty happy with that um, when it comes to the scrum half position. I just got one uh, little tidbit to add in here. Yeah. You know, uh, this is this is me channeling my Matt again. Mm -hmm. That call on uh, on Adams, that red card was terrible. Terrible. They called him. They said he extended the arm to make contact with the head or whatever. But the Dallas player, I don't remember who it was, was falling over. So I was like, I watched it. I thought it was ridiculous. So I, you know what? I actually took social media and I wanted to look online to see the what everyone was saying, and everyone's like, yeah, that's terrible. Terrible red card. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it didn't affect Nola, but that's probably a reason why, you know, Nola only got 35 on Dallas. Right. right. I mean, they still scored multiple times with the red, but. Yep. And I will say as well, uh, fly half, team of the week honoree, Rodney Iona. Beauty. I mean. Beauty. Back, right? And it was funny because we talked about him last show, about him being a possible drop candidate. He and then was. he makes us he makes us eat our words, and he puts up a twenty eight point four fantasy point performance, two conversion kicks, two penalty kicks. But it wasn't even that. Ninety eight meters gained, a try assist, seven tackles, and a try. He plays the full eighty minutes with Reese Botha at the fullback position. Mm -hmm. His first uh, game all year long where he surpassed over sixty three minutes. I know Rodney Iona was scooped in the fantasy Rutgers League OG League off of waivers by a fly half needy team in. We said his name multiple times on the show. Stephen Lowen, uh, the community moderator who picked him up, who was in need of a fly half. Uh, and he must be happy because oh. you just picked up a if, – if, and again, I want to emphasize that you we never just know need to what see they're this gonna consistency. Do with the you don't know. Rodney Iona has started the past two matches. He started a majority of them, only missing out on one. But will we get this Rodney Iona-type performance every week? Again, it's a lot – a lot – no, you're not going to get 28 out of your fly hat. No. No. But what I guess what I'm saying is that what are we going to start seeing, right? Are we going to see you know you're gonna consistent see next kicking from him? Reese Both at 10, and yeah. I own at 15. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, I don't think Iona's body can, uh, can keep up on the 15 side of things. True. But you're right, though. You're right, though. It's 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 kind of flip floppy again. But I think the big thing was when are we going to get this Ronnie Iona performance that we've been trying to wait for? That's he finally it. got here in round four. It's just now, are you confident moving forward him? If I'm in Stephen Lowen's case, if I'm a, if I'm a fly have needed team and I was able to scoop Ronnie Iona, I mean oh, yeah. I'm riding with him until yep. he shows me. Until the wheels ways. fall off. 100%. If he puts another dud next week, that's where I'm like, okay. He's had three matches where he's had a dud. Did play one. Play play didn't play one, and he has twenty eight point four in round four. You're a little bit dicey. Again, yeah, your overall might... looks great, but your week to week average. Mm. We'll see. We'll see. But it is encouraging to see. And if you were able to scoop Ronnie Iona up, if he has the potential to do this, you're looking pretty sure. pretty moving forward here. There's a the debatable point. another league winning pickup. Yeah, but again, I mean, again, you'd probably be kicking yourself for the team that dropped Rodney Iona. Right. I think Luckily, every single position. team has dropped a guy that has regained value after two weeks. Sure. Sure. All right. Let's shift on over to the first match of Sunday, fifth match of the weekend, the Chicago Hounds taking on the New England Free Jacks. Uh, the Free Jacks winning this one, expectedly 22 17. Unexpectedly, though, a little bit tighter than what she thought it was. Uh, the, the, it looked cold. It looked a little bit. Weather looked a little bit questionable. Damn right. It looked times. cold. Uh, but. Not necessarily the dominant performance you would have expected from the New England Free Jacks. They, I mean, winning teams win games, yep. no matter by how much. Uh, Chicago still looks a little bit mm-hmm. awkward on their offense. This whole Billy Meeks project of him being at oh, the 10, I'm still it's not gotta be over. into it. It's got to be over. We keep on saying it. I don't think it's going to be, uh, but it's, 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 it's interesting. But nonetheless, though, the Free Jacks coming out with the win here. Uh, uh, over the Chicago Hounds, just not as dominant. Again, I was, I think, af- after Miami of ha- hammering home Miami guys, the next one was okay. I'm hammering home Free Jacks guys. Because, well, if uh, watching I, the I, game, I... dude, Chicago was the better team. They truly were. Experience won that game, but how many times was Chicago down in that? What is it? not the red zone? What is it? The uh, five meters? Not or even 22. the five meter. I'm calling 22? it twenty-two. Yeah, the twenty-two. They were down inside that, you know, they had that, the, they had the try called off for uh, either a forward pass to the guy or a knock on. That was literally a handoff, basically. So New England got super lucky there. And then, I mean, Patro's made a couple plays where a 10 to make those plays were disgusting. Yeah. Like that line out uh, that went uh, fumbling and then right to Patro's, he made yeah. three guys miss. Like it's not the, if you're a New England fan, you're not pumped about that game because watching it, I was really impl- impressed with Chicago. Some really ugly stuff to clean up, ball handling mistakes, yada, yada. But honestly, a good game by Chicago. Where I think I, 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 I still have my questions about Chicago. Like, I mean, again, you stay. Oh, they're not. They're not simply. taking the league by storm. Yeah. But they'll be like yeah. that team where it's like, you know, they go up against um, OGDC. It's like, it, it's not, it's not over. It's not a for sure one. Even, you know, they we'll can see. even see. Just we'll my see. take. Just my take. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I, I am. I am. I mean, maybe the, some of the. I enjoyed the game, the man. An, I thought Chicago anim- played great. Maybe some of the animosity was is that I'm a Billy Meeks owner, and seeing him at the ten position is not fun. No, being a Billy Meeks owner. No, and it uh, should be fun. Nonetheless, well, we'll see. But again, uh, some Adrian's big, t- big time performances though, uh, fantasy wise. You mentioned his name, Vandy Jason Putros. I mean, twenty four and a half fantasy points for his uh, performance of the year so far. Uh, he's going to be one of the be- best fly halves, and I, he was like our second ranked fly half going into the season, anyways. Yep. But I mean, twenty four and a half fantasy points. His first two tries of the season scored in this one with eighty eight meters gained, nine tackles. Tackles, yep. a conversion kick, and a penalty kick. He has now uh, three straight matches where he's above four uh, double-digit fantasy points. Uh, his first week, he scored 9.9, so I would even slot that in as a double-digit fantasy point yeah. performance. Um, pa- Patros is looking good. Uh, another guy on the New England Free Jacks, Daniel Morgan Putarangi, uh, solid in this one. Man, uh, he back looked three start, good. His first back three start since uh, week one. Uh, and he, yeah, 147 meters gained, seven tackles, a try assist, 19.3 fantasy points, like I said. Um, and then uh, Vian Conradi. I mean, we were waiting kind of for a a a kind of a bigger match since his first week performance. He's been solid, but yep. I don't know if he's been that top overall back row player that you've been expecting so far. I mean, all the back rows have seemed kind of down here. I'm scoring yeah. this year so far. Uh, but 15.1 fantasy points for him, 75 meters gained, 22 tackles. That's exactly what you look for for Vian, just consistency there. Mm-hmm. And then a couple uh, Chicago uh, lineups. Mark O'Keefe, 
we he was a drop candidate last show mm -hmm. and again there must be something about us having this drop segment and people having boom games after the fact we they're watching it, it. <laughs> we said it with rodney iona and now here with marco key we said he's probably a drop candidate because 5.4 fantasy points 3.9 in round two sits round three and then he comes out here with an 18 fantasy point performance, 147 meters, gained six tackles. Um, yeah. Pretty, pretty incredible stuff. Again, um, I think there are some takeaways here. Again, one I thing, don't think, yeah. One thing though to add, if you're a Nate Osberger owner, make sure yes. you uh, keep an eye out as a replacement. I doubt he plays next week. That was a yeah. heavy, heavy hit. Yeah, yeah, I was just about to about to say, yeah, Nate Osberger. It's been a tough goings for him uh, for yeah, the start of this fantasy year because uh, obviously Chicago's offense just not rolling quite yet, and not at least definitely not in the same way that he was able to take advantage of with San Diego last year. And now with the injury uh, there, we'll keep out an eye out for any updates on that side. But yeah, definitely have a backup plan in place mm -hmm. going into Week Five. I would sure. Um, all right, let's shift on over to the last match, uh, and oh, uh, I guess the one we'll I didn't want to talk about. Yeah, I know. Second best for last. Um, interesting matchup here between the Utah Warriors and RFC Los Angeles. Uh, 6 p.m. Eastern time kickoff here on the Sunday. Uh, Utah uh, actually wrote a whole bunch of notes just for you, Vandy, in this Thank one. You. Uh, to make sure that we were breaking this down, this one uh, quite properly here. Um, the offense, I'll start with this, looks so much better with your key guys. Joel Mono. Back in the lineup. John Ma, Joe no, Mano, no, no. Uh, 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 Mika Cruze back in the lineup. Cool to see Isaiah Cruze and Mika Cruze yeah. brothers. The I think brothers uh, MLR, MLR tweet it was like the first time since 2019 where we've had brothers in the starting lineup. That was yep. pretty cool to see. Uh, but good to see that what has made Utah so lethal in the past, we saw kind of glimpses of, uh, glimpses of it mm -hmm. for the first time this year. The thing with this game was defense. just defense and just not being able to finish. Like, I mean, I think you guys uh, from the, the broadcast had like 80% possession, mm -hmm. like at points in, in that match. And mm -hmm. you were times there was the line out that was at the five that you muffed up that you just didn't capitalize on. Uh, RFC Los Angeles having the yellow card, not being able to capitalize in those situations as well. Just a lot of missed opportunities. Um, and then obviously some bad luck there. Andrew Coe with the intercept there. Uh, Dude, I was complaining that. about it last week with Joel Hodgson, man. It's every week he makes the same pass on the same play and gets picked off three weeks in a row. If he's on the front side of the field or front to the camera, he makes yeah. that stupid pass to the winger and it's gotten picked off three games in a row for a try. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's tough to see with that. And again, just mistakes like that, it doesn't help you. And, and I guess on the flip side, I mean, uh, Los Angeles, they're starting to kind of string things together. Andrew Coe's electric. We'll get into ah! kind of his performance, which is incredible. Uh, the reason why, listeners, if you uh, uh, haven't been following along, Vandy passed on Andrew Coe uh, for Mikey Teo in the in the second round. Uh, uh, Teo's washed. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, Los Angeles, they uh, still a little bit messy. I think Maddie has said it in the past and, and on the pod that – uh, they still have things to figure out, but they're slowly making improvements. And this is a team that is athletic. And when oh they kind my. of similar, similar to the Nola Gold, mm -hmm. they are stringing some nice plays together. Mm -hmm. And when you have them in space, they are looking very, very nice. And 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 I give kudos to Los Angeles. They get their first uh, victory at home in uh, in franchise history, a 36-32 victory over the Utah Warriors. They are now both one and three, heading into Week Five. I think we're the worst team in the West. Yeah. It, I, again. Dallas Jackals would beat us. Yes, they would. Yes, they would. What I'm what I'm saying is that I think injuries have had a big play in this. Oh, Let's every team's that. got injuries. Okay. I, I get that. I get that. You know, and you are, really I will work. say caveat is that you are a Utah Warriors fan, and I know the type of fan you are with your professional. Passionate. Team. Always a little bit passionate, a little bit harder on them, a little bit more critical. Because I care. Okay. It's it, is you, it is because you care, and it's a beautiful thing. Uh, but I will say, though, to say that you're last in the West is not as terrible as it seems because this Western Conference is crazy. And it was like that last year. It's going to be like that this year. They got to the, switch the, it up. They got to do something. I mean, there was going to be plans with that when they were going to the three-division thing before, before the whole wahoo of everyone dropping out and coming in and everything like that. But, I mean – Let's let's do a test here. Like, let, so you you guys have lost to Los Angeles. You guys are sitting fifth in the West. I think we beat Los Angeles with McNeen. Okay, okay. So you think? Do you think overall Utah is better than? Uh, it's it's tough to say. 
Yes. Because you just okay. lost yes. to them. Yes, we are the better team than LA. Yep. I think if you ran okay. that game 10 times, we win six of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a coin flip, more or less. <laughs> nice. A confident, you're the, a confident you're coin flip. The, you're giving the 0.1% uh, to your boys. Uh, I think Got that's it. the fan, fan of ship on your side. But I think you beat the Chicago Hounds. I honestly think you do. Mm. I think Old Glory, Old Glory DC us. is a competitive one. They beat us. I think we Miami, beat Miami is a competitive one. We beat Miami. And I think you're beating Anthem. Oh, I think so, I think we beat Anthem. So you're not you're not you're We're not the worst team in the MLR, but we're the worst team in the West. But again, well, it's context. Well, the West is really freaking good. Really, really good. But, but let's hand about the last lie. team of the week. No, no. Let's hand uh let's hand out the last team of the week on a read back three player, Michael. Manson, if there's a Dude. great spot when it comes to the Utah Warriors, uh, Michael Manson, it was a guy that was mentioned earlier in our shows here as a, a top waiver wire pickup. He might be on your waiver wire heading into week five that you might uh, want to take a look at. I know that Utah's on by, but hey, if you have a spot to stash a guy, this might be a guy to do it. We'll talk more about it in our uh, watch uh, waiver wire watch segment. But Michael Manson looked uh, looked pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, he racked up a total of 27.1 fantasy points in this one, which is uh, pretty electric there. Um, had a stellar of a game, uh, 182 meters gained, a try, three tackles, a try assist, playing the full eight. Now, we did play week one, but that was against Seattle. So I wouldn't hold him uh, hostage over that week one performance. That was a tough, tough game. But, you and know, think- it'll be interesting when McAnee's back, like, yeah, and that's where the questions are. It's like, are you, I don't know, again, on the bye week, going to be tough to hold on to a guy that you're not quite sure about. Mm-hmm. But it's that back line of uh, having McAnney, Joe Mono's back. Now, he did get knocked up a little bit towards the end. Of, yeah. So we'll see whether or not he's kind of full 100%. They do have the bye week to kind of recover, which is good. Yeah. Uh, they have McAnney, Manson, Isaiah Cruz. Where does that all play? Out I could see her? Isaiah maybe getting slotted out. Manson could maybe play wing, but I'd actually like to see Manson stay at 15 and McAdee go to 14. Throw him it's on just, the wing. And it's interesting because we McAdee has been so electric at the fullback position for so long. We've seen what he's been able to do, but obviously that hasn't shown here in 2024 no. yet. But he hasn't played done. with this, you know, full, you know, the, the, that man or mono, the CK, Cruz combo. We haven't had that yet. With McAnee. So, you know what? I'm hard well, on let, Utah, but it's because I love him. Let's talk about Andrew Coe. Mm. 23.7 fantasy points, a two-try performance. He has scored no less than double digits all season long, a low of 11.8. This He's is his high so far, 23.7. His second double-try performance of the season, 94 meters gained, six tackles, a breakdown steal. Man, he is on something. We got to oh, bring him back I'm sorry, on the show. Okay? I'm sorry. You can stop <laughs> rubbing it in, bro. We got to bring him back on this show because uh, he he's something's in his water because he's having electric. Don't say that. The MLR is listening. Far. If he pops, that's on you. If he pops, <laughs> that's on you. No, I, I have full faith in my uh, in my uh, in my brethren, Andrew Coe. I mean, he's a former Olympian. He he knows what's up. He knows what's up. Or he knows how to avoid the dosage. Uh, not going to say anything on that. All right, moving on uh, to Dan Hall and said, hey. Uh, look, best performance of the year. First round the, pick, Dan Holmes. First round pick, Dan Holmes. Head, <laughs> rugby wrap up picking him. He finally pays through. I mean, to be fair, he was a large reason why you lost this week to the team that was under uh, that was defeated so far. Vandy, seventeen point four fantasy points, forty eight meters gained, seven tackles, four conversion kicks, a penalty kick. You got the full brunt of first round pick, Dan Holmes. Head for you here uh, this week, which is uh, interesting. And uh, last one we'll say for Utah Wars. Welcome back, Joe Mono. Yeah, uh, 17.1 fantasy points in his first appearance of the year since suffering that preseason injury. 98 meters gained, a try, six tackles. I mean, Joe Mono, when he's on the field, is worth that first round pick. It's just so unfortunate that he suffered that preseason injury. We'll see. It I could be worse, man. He only missed three weeks. It's true. It's true. Dude, uh, your so guys maybe, will get, okay. everybody will get bumps and bruises. Very rarely do you have a guy play full seasons. Yeah. So we'll see if uh, if that kind of writes the ship there. Again, got the, the bye week here to kind of get uh, get 100% in and back into it in week six when uh, Utah returns. But, hey, tough one. 36-32 win for RFC Los Angeles. Sorry for uh, the other Utah Warriors fans along with Vandy uh, in this one. It was a, it was a, it was a heartbreaking one. All right, uh, let's so talk about uh, these buys. It's by Mageddon, like we said at the top of the show. Uh, four 
teams on by. We got uh, uh, the Utah Warriors, Los Angeles, uh, Rugby Fo- RFC Los Angeles, the New England Free Jacks, and the NOLA Gold all on by this week. So mm-hmm. you're looking at uh, uh, a quarter of your teams here that are not playing here in week five. So you're going to have some guys that are going to be on your bench uh, that you're going to have to find some replacements for. So that is what this waiver wire watch list is here for. Um, on my list this week, all guys that are playing uh, this week and should be available on your waiver wire that you can have a quick look at to see if you can stream um, and see if you can uh, pop them into your lineup here uh, moving forward. Uh, let's start off at the top here. Um, Augusto Boom is my uh, first uh, waiver wire pickup here for front row. Uh, slim pickings, I will say, at the front row position. Uh, sure. Again, in our in our league, uh, surprisingly, Jake Turnbull is still available in in our league here, uh, which is uh, actually quite surprising. Uh, but I think that just goes to show you kind of the value that people have when it comes to uh, – front row position and their point performer. Uh, yeah, it's more but, just, I don't think uh, anybody wants to carry two front rows. It's true, but I'm doing it. I got Nick Suchon and freaking DeWalt Coetzee on my freaking lineup yeah. right now. So it's not a, uh, it's tough. It's definitely tough. And it's going to be even tougher this bye week to hold uh, a couple of those guys. Yeah. Um, but if Jake Turnbull is not available for you, <clears> I know he's picked up in a whole bunch of leagues. Again, 7.9 fantasy points for Jake Turnbull in this one uh, at the front row position. Again, another match where he plays above 70 minutes at the front row position double digit tackles that's exactly what you like to see but the name that i just mentioned again uh augusto bohm is uh, someone to look at if you're looking at uh, the front row position to stream this week uh has back-to-back starts and the reason why that i put him in this is another one of those guys that is nearing around that nine a 70 minute bonus point mark um and that's what you're looking for vanny and i have said this on the show before you hope for a guy staying on the field when it comes to streamers, when it comes yep. to guys that are just plugging and playing and hoping for the best. And Augusto Boehm did solid. I mean, 7.1 fantasy points uh, with seven tackles, one try assist, 30 meters gained with that first 70-minute bonus of the year. Uh, Boehm might be a guy that you turn to if your front row player is, uh, is uh, uh, on either Utah, Los Angeles, NOLA, or New England. Uh, Boehm is a guy that, that I would definitely uh, look at here. But again, I yep. think fab-wise... I'm not putting much fab on on Bohm. Uh He's not a guy that I'm, you know, a pickup that everyone's rushing to. He's no. just kind of a streaming option that you can put in there. 13 fantasy points uh, in total so far this season again. So nothing crazy. But again, if your front row guy is sitting out, he's a guy to look at for this upcoming uh, upcoming uh, week. Uh, second row position, waiver wire. Uh, Justin Basson. Uh, he's a guy that I mentioned quite a few times here on my waiver wire watch list. Been in and out. Uh, he was out the the uh, the week before uh, when it came to the start of uh, Nathan Den Hout. But Justin Basson back in the starting lineup here in round four. Uh, 7.7 uh, fantasy points and kind of the same sentiment about uh, 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 of this 80 minutes. Getting a guy that's on the field. He's played every uh, full match so far this season. Uh, 44 meters gained, 11 tackles. Um, he's a guy that I might even uh, say is he's even further than a streamer. Uh, you might be comfortable with having this guy as a week in and week out second row player. If you're struggling at second row, I'd put, you know, a dollar, two dollars, three dollars on, on Justin Basson. Again, the question is whether or not how frequent he'll be switching in and out here uh, with a guy like Nathan Den Hout sitting on the sideline. Uh, but Basson has looked good when he's on the field. So that is one thing to, to keep in mind. Uh, same sentiment there, Vandy. Like that. Gusto Bohm, Justin Basson, front row, second row. Yes, sir. Nothing on Bohm couple dollars on Basson. All right. Uh, back row play here. Uh, Mason Flesh is a guy that I'm looking at the back row. Uh, yeah. He is uh, scored 26.6 fantasy points on the year so far. He's played 80 full minutes. And again, I know it's tough to buy in to, uh, to the Chicago Hounds mm-hmm. fantasy assets right now. But again, Minutes, 80 minutes minutes played every single match. Mm -hmm. He's got double-digit tackles for the first time this past season against the New England Free Jacks, 6.9 fantasy points. Again, this is a streaming option. Uh, If if you're out of back row player, you can plug him in um, and and see see where he goes against that. It's a tough one. Mm -hmm. He's placing the Seattle Seawolves this upcoming week. I wouldn't count a try for him, but they should be, he should be tackling a lot here if he's in the starting lineup against a really solid Seattle Seawolves team. Again, streaming guy, option, not yep. putting any money on Mason Flesh, but he is an option there for you yep. if you'd like to to hop on that uh, there moving forward. I would say just another 
like decent one on Chicago would be uh, McLean Jones. Mm-hmm. He seems when he's playing back row, you know, he's getting the minutes late uh, this week, last week. And then the other one would be uh, Billy, I think it's Helu for uh, for Hello. San Diego. Yep. Yep. As as he's been playing back row, really solid, full games, good points. And I mean, um, you know, not a guy you're going to play week in, week out, but I'm by Mageddon. San Diego is playing. So just uh, just another guy there. All right. And then shifting on to now the scrum half position. I mean, it's going <laughs> to be a struggle every single week to try to figure out scrum half, fly half, what the heck you're going to do. Uh, you, you better have, I mean, again, in a <laughs> – Eight team league that our fantasy records leagues are in. Hopefully, you can find a backup position, or you're just punting that position for the week. I know in our league, I'm there punting. are going to be guys. There are going to be guys that are going to have no guys at the scrum app position, yep. or you're putting in a back, uh, like a backup guy, to see if they they do go in at some point. Yeah. Um. But again, that might not be worth the. It's not worth a roster, roster spot. spot. Again, when when Luke Campbell is scoring the highest fantasy point total of the week at ten point in, and that's your ceiling. Again, you're not missing that much. Is a roster spot more valuable to hold on to a guy that you know is going to produce more for you on a weekly basis than one of these random names. Now, the one name that I am going to bring up because he could have been dropped. He might've not been is COC Nye. COC Nye was one of my top wire week, pickups. Then. No, no, no. That, that, that just into the website. That's, uh, that's oh. uh, that, that just, it pops up there. Um, but he, he did not start this week being on the Anthem. There is a chance, and I say this because I was one of these owners that I put, and I after a 16.6 fantasy point performance in round two, he was one of the top pickups in my eyes. I picked him up, put a decent amount of fab on him. I think I put 13 bucks. Then not seeing him start in round four was a little bit shocking to me, and mm-hmm. I just don't have the roster space to hold two nines. So I dropped uh, COC9, and I bring him up because someone might have done that in your league as well. So if he has dropped, he could be starting this week. Pick him up through this waiver wire period if you need a nine. He's a guy if he's on your waiver wire, that I would. He could, do, he could have a good game. game. It's OGDC. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, shifting on to the fly hat position. Oh, um, another one. I, I, another one where you're probably punting it if there's no, if there's no, you know, thoughts there. Now, the only guy that is really in our waiver wire, at least in our 10-team league, Sam Windsor. is Sam Windsor. And the only reason he's not starting, obviously, because Mac Jones or uh, McLean Jones. Yeah. No, not no, not McLean Jones. Um, not McLean Jones. Um, Mac Mason. Mac Mason. McLean Mac Jones. Jones. What are you, <laughs> Chicago I, I, now? I, I, no, I said Mac Jones. I said uh, for Mac King. Jones. I know. I know. He's not I know. even that's, on your team. I know. Anymore. That's the the New England Patriots fan in me that said that. No, Mac Mason. We saw Mac Mason step out. Sam Windsor subbed in. I am only picking Sam Windsor up. As kind of like, what if Sam Windsor starts this week? Again, and the performance of him against the Houston Sabercats was nothing for me to be happy about and no think way. that he would ever, unless it was just a rest period and you're facing the Chicago Hounds, that they would maybe sit Mac Mason and give Sam Windsor the start. But he threw like two picks in that one. Um, but he did play 21 minutes. He showed that he can still have the boot. I mean, he hit that incredible 50 meter kick uh, for the the Sea Wolves in that one. So the 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 start the potential is there if he starts. Now the fact that if he starts is probably very very slim. But again, if you're needy and fly half, and the Seattle lineup Which... comes out, and a Sam Windsor is starting, you're putting Sam Windsor in there, yeah. right? So uh, he might he might be again. It's by Mageddon. We're 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 doing crazy picks in this one. You know what? Just, you just a heads up what too. You're as we keep mentioning this by him again, if you're new to if you're new to fantasy sports, you got two ways to look at this. If you're top 500 of your league, it's a week you can afford. You know you don't want to uh, punt any week, but it's a week where you don't want to burn valuable guys. If you have a guy that you have faith in and you're holding on to him, and you're gonna drop him for Sam Windsor or say OC nine. You know what? If you lose one, it's not the end of the world. If you're last place, yeah, okay, you got you got to make some moves. You got to try every week. You like, can't. You can't. A win is more valuable. A win is more valuable for me as a one in three team. Yeah. Than Larouge rugby at a three and one. Exactly. You know what so I mean? Larouge so, would have no problem, right? Not dropping guys because hell, even he. You know, you're not guaranteed a loss, but it's just for new new fantasy players. Don't be so worried about making sure your lineup is is keyed in. You got everybody playing. You can take hits and you can still win, but uh, you know, just don't 
you know, don't trade away a lot of value on your bench just to fill a lineup. And and that's the important part there, Vanny. That's a great point because I think we've heard it in the Discord community that five roster, five bench spots are not a lot. And it may be something we look in the future mm-hmm. that maybe it's something that we need to expand um, again. But in this season right now, and the way the rules work is that there's five bench spots. And again, I like five. In, the, the, Honestly, the I like five. The sentiment in fantasy too is just you, you'll never have enough bench spots. Nope. You'll give six. You wish you had seven, right? You yeah, have seven, remember, you wish the you other had teams eight. got six too. It, exactly. And again, it would it, it makes it makes the free agency pool so thin. Yeah. But nonetheless, there are value in those bench spots, and you got to just approach yeah. it from that. So take yeah. a lot of things into account where you're standing in your leagues, yeah. where your your kind of position uh, positional guys are in terms of who's on buy. You know, hey, maybe you just got to take the brunt of buy again and just yep. say, hope for the best and move on and see where you go. Don't panic. And, and that's why we're calling that's it buy Mageddon. There's so many buys. It, it doesn't work like this every week. So don't, yeah. don't have fear. And, don't, you know, yeah, okay. And I've it's that it much, and it's that much more emphasized yep. and, and magnified in fantasy MLR than it is in, let's say, fantasy football. Because yeah. you have 32 teams exactly. in football. Exactly. Right, you're gonna find a guy to stream. Yep. Right, there's only 12 teams in the MLR, and there's eight teams or 10 teams in your fantasy leagues. Right, there, there's yeah. like, there's just not that many players to go around. So when you have a quarter of the teams, four teams not playing, yeah, it's gonna feel like the end of the world. And the thing and is, gonna feel everybody's like again. going through it. Yeah. Everybody's going through it. Exactly. So don't 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 trade the farm just to fill a, a roster. I guess what we're saying is that there's a little bit of hope and there's a little bit of optimism. It is not going as it's despite the name of by McGinnon, it's not the end of the world. There will be a these week. losses in these weeks feel better. You know, it's like it's like okay, you know what? I lost, but here's this giant caveat. Yeah. All right. Uh let's shift on now to the center position. Um, I'm going with, and this might be a little bit of a cop out, but yeah, it is. I'm going with whoever starts in the San Diego center line, because we don't know if it's going to be Ma Nanu or if it's going to be Tian Lutz, but it whoever, be it Tien is, Lutz. whoever it is, they're going to do well because Tian Lutz is coming off of his first start of the, the year, scoring 21.2 fantasy points. Ma Nanu disappointing round three, but his involvement in the San Diego offense has been positive rounds one and rounds two, yeah. both above eight fantasy points. So it's not going to kill you as a streamer. I'd be comfortable with either of these two guys uh, for for San Diego here um, uh, as they they face on uh, the Miami Sharks, which is a team they should be beating. So there's going to be points to be had Mm -hmm. there. Um, So whether that's Tian Luce, whether that's uh, Ma Nanu, one of those guys is going to go. So again, maybe this is something that you maybe don't put a waiver bid right now. I, I wouldn't feel confident putting a waiver bid on any of these guys. I might just wait till the lineup comes out and try to jump the gun when the lineup does come out and try to figure it out. If you want to take a shot, maybe no throw it out there, bid. take a shot. Yeah, zero dollar bid on Tian Lutz. He's shown that he has the ceiling there. I mean, in one week, he scored more fantasy points than Ma Nanu has scored in three. Uh, and then maybe you make that maybe you make that switch when you see Ma Nanu start at the twelve, and you just drop Tian Lutz from Ma Nanu for your streamer. So but you got to remember, fantasy is great, numbers are great, but leadership on the field is a huge thing that not uh, Ma Nanu brings. So. Something to remember, just because Tion Lutz put up, like Ryan said, at more points in one week than he did in three, doesn't mean it's a no-brainer for their coaching staff. Yeah, absolutely. All right, and then uh, last, let's shift on to the back three players here. Uh, again, I think the big one here, we mentioned on the show before, which is why I'm going to kind of overlook it here a little bit, but Michael Manson, if he's yeah. still available on your, uh, on your waiver wires, I would definitely scoop him up, see how this Utah Warriors uh, back three plays out. Uh, because he's shown electric ability. I mean, 7.3 in round one, and then round four comes out with his 27.1 fantasy point performance. I think we rock but a fullback again, honestly. If if there is another guy that to look at, and this is probably going to be a guy that's more widely available, I'm looking at Santiago Videla. Uh, he's had three straight starts for the Miami Sharks, all he played plays above this 80 week. minutes. And, uh, yeah, he plays this week, uh, and uh, he's taking on, again, uh, the uh, the San Diego Legion there. They're going to need him to score points here to keep up with that uh, San Diego team. Again, a little bit worrisome with that defense and how San Diego Legion has played. Yeah. Again, by Mageddon, you're really uh, – you don't got many options to choose, and he's coming off a 118-meter uh, gain game, one try for 26.3 fantasy points. Um, if you need a streaming guy, he's mm-hmm. a, guy to, it's a guy to look at if Michael yep. Manson is not available for you. And then last thing, again uh, – <laughs> Bonus point, you're Fun. punting this position this week. You are, if you have, you're not dropping your, whatever you drafted, 
you're sticking with basically for the rest of your year. You you saw them play even if they're on buy, um, and and you go there. Uh, I am not dropping any fantasy asset if the anthem defense bonus point is sitting on your waiver wire. I am not picking him up and dropping a player if I have Utah, Los Angeles, Nola through four game. weeks. They have three points. Yes, all coming in and one again, week. And to be fair. Right, our highest uh, team of the week this week for de- defense and points six. six in the Seattle Seals. Right, you're not losing six. out on a bunch of points. So again, to get through by McGeddon, uh, not that great. So uh, yeah, again, punt. I think our social post is going to say the exact same thing like it said last week. You are just, just show a field goal position. post. Exactly. All right. Uh, well, let's uh, wrap up the show, Vandy, with our week five preview and our prediction segment. Hey, uh, do I, do you I know what my a- prediction is, Ryan? What? Utah is not going to lose this week. No, there you go. That's that's about a hundred uh, percent chance. There. Guaranteed. So good, good for you on that one. Uh, too bad that one's not going to count in the standings here. But nonetheless, good. you're catching up, Vanny. Still struggling. Yeah. Maddie's in the lead here. This was a tough week for me. And one. This was a tough week. There was a lot of uh, kind of upsets here. Eighteen four yeah. and one for Maddie. Uh, myself, I'm seventeen five and one. Uh, Vandy, you're fourteen eight and one. I got to give you credit though. You're signing with your Utah boys. But this week, you're not I'm done with that. that. Utah, until you start showing something. I have I have other commitments. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. Sorry. Right. Let's you. get right into it. Again, like we said, Utah, Los Angeles, New England, NOLA, all on bye. Four teams on bye. So we got four matches this week to play with. And we open up on the Friday, 8 30 p.m. Eastern time. Dallas Jackals at home taking on the Houston Sabercats in the Battle of Texas. This one should be an interesting one. I'm playing all my Houston Sabercats. I'm interested to mm-hmm. see the lineup that comes out. Is AJ going to be a 10? Is Davy Coaster going to be a 10? Is Davy Coaster going to be a 15? That is going to be a telltale sign here, I think, moving forward. I'm really hoping Davy is back at fly half, but I'm not too sure. This is speaking in context as a guy who lost AJ Alatimo. So we'll see from there. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Dallas Jackals wise, uh, I think I'm pretty confident in a lot of them. Uh, they've shown that they can score points. Yep. Houston has shown Good that they team. can let up points. I'm not uh, really straying away from any of necessarily my Dallas Jackals guys, but nonetheless, I am picking the Houston Sabercats in this one. Heard that. The only Houston player I'm not playing is Christian Dyer. Why is that, Vandy? Why is that? Because he has done nothing. He got yeah. last week started 82 minutes, three meters. In 82 minutes. 16 the week before, 27 and three. It's a, it's a great team. But he is not there for meters or tries. Would you say? Would you tackles. say he's he's the guy that you kind of put on your bench for now, time being, and you wait till he kind of has that pop off game until you feel confident putting him back in? Right now, there's enough. Meat I'm not dropping. On the free. I'm not. I'm. I, but I'm not dropping Christian Dyer. You're. Yeah, I think you're. <laughs> okay. I guess we'll see on the waiver wire what happens here because I might look at Christian Dyer as a team that needs. You're a crazy. Well, okay. We'll okay. 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 Uh, yeah, Houston. Houston in this one. All right. Uh, Maddie went Houston as well. Uh, he still had the time to text me from the Pacific North. Mm-hmm. So he's going Houston as well. Can I have a feeling on. that this one's going to be uh, be, uh, be uh, pretty synonymous with all of us here. Uh, Chicago Hounds taking on the Seattle Seawolves at home. One, two, and one. Chicago taking on the three and one Seawolves in a bounce back game. Seawall. I am playing every single one of my Seawolves players. Expect a fat, fat week from Mac Mason. I don't know what I'm doing with my Chicago Maybe guys. Dan Creel? Come on. Billy Meeks has been put to my bench until further notice. Yes, 100%. Uh, especially with that fly half eligibility. Maybe in this week you have to play him because you don't. The interesting question is you play Billy Meeks at fly half, who's playing at fly half, or Davey Coatser at 15 if AJ Allen team is kicking. That's an interesting one. Does Coatser have think... his fly half still? Yeah, he would. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. So I think I still would play Davy Coatser. I play Coatser playing Seattle Seawolves right now. Yep. Uh, but I yeah, maybe in a in the fly half needy week because of all the buys you're putting Billy Meeks in. I'm doing my best to not have him in. Not many teams have that luxury, but you probably have a fly half on your squad if you had Billy Meeks because you probably drafted him as a center anyway. So there's ways to go. But in the end, I am picking Seattle in this one. Yeah, give me the Seawall, baby. All right, so uh, Maddie's also picking Seattle, so we are all on the same page, two matches in. Uh, that was your first game on Saturday, 6 p.m. Eastern time. All right, second game on Saturday at the same friggin' time. Why, why, why? We have all day Saturday to play these games. Why are they putting both of them at 6 p.m. Eastern time? But Anthem playing Old Glory DC at home 
0-4, looking for their first win against DC, who's coming off of a tough loss um, against uh, the uh, um, you got it San Diego Legion. Nice. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm expecting a huge game from Jason Robertson. Yeah, I think Vok is going to eat. I think Vok is going to eat too. I think against that weak forward pack for Anthem. The sentiment oh, here, oh, oh, oh. I think obviously there are concerns around this Old Glory DC squad. But I think the sentiment moving forward is that you play every single player you can against Old Anthem. Glory D or against Anthem or yeah. uh, Anthem uh, Rugby Carolina as you can, no matter the team. Miami showed it last week. Old Glory DC is going to show it this week. Yeah. I'm starting Vaca. I am starting Robertson. Axel Muller is a plug and play for me. I think he's going to have a big one. I think Damian, Muller's going to. Damian yeah. Hoyland is going to be it. But to be fair, with the way Old Glory DC has looked, I'm not shying away necessarily from my Anthem guys too much as I no, was. No, no, no. Uh, By no uh, means. I, uh, against like Miami. I mean, I would still play Oscar Caller for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, to Rangatira Waitokia. I'm probably going to play Ty Aljabori, well. to be honest. There you go. Um, and again, you pick up COC9 off the waiver wire. Yeah. He's available yeah, for he's you. Good you have him. You play him as well. Yeah. All right. The last match to wrap up week five on this by Mageddon, uh, the old soul match on uh, Sunday. Miami Sharks, one and four, coming off their very first win in franchise history. Hey, you got to peg me down for Old Glory. The, oh, Old Glory DC. Right. That's right. Got to do the picks. I said Old Glory DC too. Maddie said Old Glory DC too. So again, three matches in. We're all on the same page. Uh, going now to the final match again. Miami Sharks looking for their first, uh, coming off their first win in franchise history, one and four. Taking on the San Diego Legion, coming off the big win against Old Glory DC. Um, this one will be an interesting one. I think my hype around the San Diego Legion players are not as high as they were last year with the squad, but the no. defense is really, really good. Yep. I am not, I'm tempering. I'm obviously still playing Philippe Echeverry. Yep. I'm tempering my expectations, though. He's not going to have, obviously, the crazy game that he had against a, a fantasy dishing out points team like the Anthem. Yeah. I'm a little bit more hesitant on guys like Ardeo. Um, I just think San Diego has a really. Are you playing defense. Videla? See that, that, and that, and that's the thing is that on any normal week, I'd probably say you know pick him up on your waiver wire if you need a back three guy and see how he does. You might not have that luxury. So again, I think a lot of league members, a lot of league managers, are just not going to have the the option to be benching some guys. But if I yeah. have another option other than Videla, I would go. The other option. At center, would you play Nick Grigg? If I have another option, <laughs> I would play Nick Grigg. I would I would look for it. But if I have to play Nick Grigg, I'll play Nick Grigg. I'm optimistic with Nick Grigg coming off of the big time performance. Again, it's against Anthem. Nick Grigg had a whole lot of a lot of hype going into him going into this year, but against a San Diego Legion defense that has shown that it's pretty. You got a pretty year. lucky try too, honestly. Yeah, so we'll 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 see we'll see how how it goes. But if I have another option, I'm trying to stay away. Mm -hmm. But you might not have that option. Just throwing Unless, some names out. Yep, uh, I'm still then going San Diego in this one. I hate that we all agreed on it, and I just want to be something different. But there's. I there's just can't no... see San Diego losing this one. Yeah, I think this is probably the easiest week we've had yeah. so far. If there's a week that we, everyone goes perfect. <laughs> the one upset, like, I don't even know where the upset is in this one. Maybe it's probably Miami over San Diego, right? That like, would be the, probably the only upset, spot. But I, I, even that, that's kind of a stretch in my head. But, hey, maybe we'll get shocked, uh, and we'll see. But I'm putting you down for San Diego. We all went San Diego. All the same picks here in week five. So none of movement in the standings. Uh, we'll see whether or not uh, that changes in week six. But nonetheless, like we said, it's a buy me get in that's looming. And uh, hey, do your best to get through it. We've given you some advice and tips here. Don't stress. I know fantasy MLR is a thing that is very easy. Fantasy sports in general is an easy thing to stress about. Just remember, you you're you're it. supposed to enjoy this, okay? <laughs> you signed yeah. up. I know it's, it's don't <laughs> be sick. Don't stay up at night over it, okay? Oh, but we do anyways. We, do, we anyways. do anyways. The amount of times that I'm sitting in my bed at three in the morning trying to figure out if I'm gonna drop a guy or pick up a guy. It's 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 it happens. I don't know. Me. It's it's me, it's that Saturday morning games you're sitting there going. If I'm gonna play the wrong guy, no matter what, I'm playing yeah. the wrong guy here. Just feeling like you have a. Friend. You got two like, good matchups. One guy's against Miami. One guy's against Anthem. You're like, I'm making a mistake here. Yeah. Well, again, look out for some of those guys on your waiver wire. By Mageddon, wishing all the best. We'll see everyone on the other side. We'll make it through. It's not quite the end of the world. 
And again, fantasy MLR is trudging on. It's going to be interesting to see uh, the league managers. Obviously, we've been in it, Vandy. We've experienced Bimageddon before. Oh, so many times. Uh, but it's going to be interesting and funny to see how... Uh, I've already seen people panicking about it, about how crazy this wave of wire period is going to oh, be. Oh, yeah. Um, it's not so the it's first. Funny to see it the won't be the last Bimageddon this year either. No, there will be another one. There will be another one. All right. Well, for Matt Yee, all the way out in the West Coast, for Devin, Vandy, Vanipool, hey, it was a great show with you, man. All the hey, way from the Great well, White North. All the way from the Great White North. It was good to be on here. Some, some nice... Uh, one-on-one -on -one time I yeah we should just time. figure out times that matt's busy it's been peaceful yeah. it's been nice there's been yeah. no arguing i haven't even got frustrated yeah you keep some of your hair dude i even had a fresh shave for this episode <laughs> there you go there and you i shaved right, my well, own head so <laughs> for devin vandy vanderpool i'm ryan Yee. we'll see you all next week on another episode of the fantasy rucker show good luck on by mcgettin You've been listening to the Fantasy Ruckers Show, bringing fantasy rugby to the masses, covering everything rugby from the MLR and beyond. We hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review, and be sure to tell all your friends. We'll be back soon, but in the meantime, connect with us on social media at the Fantasy Ruckers. Till next time, this is the Fantasy Ruckers Show, signing off.